You ready to podcast, White Dog? You ready? Yeah, me too. Howdy folks, and welcome to the 11th episode of the Mad Fuzzy Podcast. This is a podcast about knitting and spinning and creating our homestead life here in Knox, Maine. I am your sock-obsessed host, Marta, and I am coming to you, as I said, from Knox, Maine, where I live with my handsome man, his wonderful mother, and our two amazing dogs. Um, If you are new to the podcast, welcome. You have tuned in for a very fun podcast. I have lots to talk about, including some finished objects, some works in progress, uh, my box of socks in review, and a little bit of mad fuzzy news, as well as a nice big life update. I have done lots of things uh, between when I recorded my last episode before Christmas. So, of course, Christmas happened and New Year's, and I went on a little adventure to upstate New York. Um... It is an extremely snowy day here in New England, um, and especially here in Knox, Maine. We live on a ridge, and so we always get the worst of the weather. Um, That explains why my light is so low and why I am chilling out by the fire. I decided to bring you my first ever fireside chat. It has not been above zero for days. Feels like weeks. And I work on a dairy farm, and so that always is just extra stress. Um, The water in our creamery froze and really kind of put our cheese production on hold. I took a snow day in which I did a lot of dyeing, but it has been brutal. It really, you don't realize how how awful it is to go out when it's negative and, and work and do things. And so my productivity, except for knitting, has just gone down the drain. Um... And so I'll give you a nice big life update at the end and let you know kind of what's going on. But if you're here for the knitting, welcome. Uh, first of all, where you can find me is mostly on Instagram. I am at Mad Fuzzy. And uh, you can also find the Mad Fuzzy Ravelry group on Ravelry. We've got a nice group going there, over 100 members. And we also have got an ongoing giveaway. Um, so go on over there and join the group. And I'll tell you about the giveaway in just a moment. Um, as well as you can email the podcast, feel free to email me whenever. It is madfuzzy at gmail.com. So that's, that's where you can find me in the world. And so I would, had hinted at that giveaway. I do have a giveaway going in the Ravelry group. It is for our introductions thread. So if you go on over to the introductions thread in the Ravelry group, the Mad Fuzzy Ravelry group, um, say hi, introduce yourself, tell me a little about yourself, not a lot about yourself, whatever you feel. I do read everyone and love it. Um, And when we hit 100 introductions, I will be drawing and giving away a skein of Mad Fuzz yarn. And I had shown that skein on the last episode. I did not bring it fireside here today. So if you do want to check that out, watch the first few minutes of last month's episode. I am not keeping up with a two-week schedule. Sorry, folks. Life, Life is busy. And a full house means rarely any time to actually sit down and take up the entire living space with my knitting and talk to you for, you know, I try to keep them under under 30 minutes. So um, we are at 84 introductions, back to the point here. 84 introductions, 84 wonderful people have dropped by and said hi and introduced themselves and told me about their socks. And so we are getting very close. We're in like the final quarter now. And so when, you know, we get to 100, I will draw that skein and send it out. But a new and exciting thing that I have decided to do in the administration section of this podcast is I am going to do my first knit along. I'm going to do a knit along. I'm hosting a knit along. I'm doing it. 2018, I'm grabbing it. I'm going for it. I'm doing a knit along. And I finally decided on what I'm going to do. Oh, white dog, was that too much excitement for you? White dog, we'll probably see Truffle before too long. She'll, she's upstairs in the bed, but white dog has gotten too hot and has gone to the cooler side of the house. So back to my knit along. I have decided I'm going to do a uh, knit along in support of all the wonderful and amazing podcasters out there doing uh, pa- pattern design, doing hand dyed yarn, making um, 
wonderful project bags and stitch markers and I am going to do what I am going to call the pod people cow. So this is a uh, cow where you are to use a yarn or a pattern or a bag or a stitch marker um, in a project and um, as long as any of those things are made by a podcaster, you're eligible to win. I haven't put together the prizes. I'm thinking it's going to probably be a little fun mini skein set or maybe a sock set heel and toe contrast yarn and whatnot. But I will, I'll be mulling that over because it's going to be kind of a long knit along. I want to be able to include people doing socks as well as people doing garments. Um, and so uh, the rules for it are going to be pretty pretty loose. I, I like I like a free flowing knit along. Um, the rules are though that you must use either a yarn, a bag, a stitch marker, something made by a podcaster. Um, if you are using something like a stitch marker or a bag, there's really you can only use it once as an entry. You can't you know do several different projects and use that same bag. It's it's a one time entry. Um, so if you also if you use a pattern by a designer, it would be just the, the one pattern. So I am going to be entering my own cal as well. I do have a wonderful works in progress that I will be showing you a little bit later. That'll be my entry. Oh, I may do a couple entries um, into this cal, but it's going to probably be a three month cal. So it's going to start, I'm going to say on the 15th of January. It's going to start on the 15th of January and it's going to run um, February, March to the 15th of April, the day after my mother's birthday. Um, and we'll draw prizes on the 15th and I'll do an episode and we'll send those out. So stay tuned. There'll be, of course, uh, I'll update you every, every episode on how that's going and, of course, be showing you the prizes here soon. But I am officially launching my first knit along, which is our Pod People Cal, hashtag Pod People Cal. Um, and I would love to see your entries on Instagram as well as I will be opening a Ravelry thread in the group so you can post. Um, there'll be a chatter group as well as a finished objects group. Um, I'm going to say works in progress are allowed as long as they were cast on in 2018. So because I am not on my game and getting an episode out at the beginning of the year, I'm going to let you guys start knitting for this cal the beginning of the year. So the start date is January 15th, but any works in progress up to the 1st of January are completely eligible. So if you have any questions about that, I will have a chatter thread. I'll be watching that, making sure that everything goes smoothly for my first, ca uh, my first cal. So welcome to the Mad Fuzzy Podcast 2018. We're doing cals. Yeah. All right. So into the knitting. That was all the administration I had for you today. I do have a couple really fun finished objects. Um, as you know, on the last episode, I had been talking about um, the... A fan of the background is really obnoxious. Here, I'll use my giant head to just block it. There, I blocked it. I knew I had a useful head. All right, so I had been knitting hats out of wool of the Andy, Andes. Um, it's just knit, knit picks wool of the Andes. They're 50 gram balls, worst weight yarn. And so I had knit, I think it came out to like 13 hats. I knit 13 in the end and just put them in boxes and sent them out and never took pictures. But I do have two still that I've been holding on to for um, some friends that are going to be coming over a little bit later in the month. And so I have two hats still to show you. First one is this lovely mustard color. It's got the, the three stripes. I've been definitely doing three color stripes by the end. So there's that one. And this gorgeous green one. Those are fun. So those are two finished objects. Oh, house phone. Time out. Sorry about that. That was handsome Colin checking in. And I also, I removed the annoying fan. So yeah, that was a good break. But back to finished objects. Sorry, let's keep this thought train rolling. So I cast on for Christmas Eve, cast on. Danny with little bobbins. Uh, I cast on on my birthday, which was Christmas Eve, which I had an amazing birthday. Oh my goodness best birthday ever. But I'll tell you more about that in the life update as well because you're here for knitting first and foremost. So I cast on a uh, Mad Fuzzy sock on my birthday. I really wanted to have my own pair of Mad Fuzzy socks like the actual Mad Fuzzy yarn and so I cast on kind of something that hadn't turned out perfect. Um, it was supposed to be Latin Beauty but it came out kind of pastel -y and there wasn't a lot of green in it. So I knit myself a plain vanilla sock 
out of it. And oh, I just think this is so pretty. Look at that sock. There we go. Thank you, Light, for finally adjusting. And it's got kind of this oh, micro striping effect to it. It's this lovely purple and um, pink. I just love it. Um, Mad Fuzzy is just such a wonderful yarn. It's very rustic feeling, but when you put it on your feet, it doesn't itch. It's very light and thin, but still so substantial and warm. It's really, it, it makes an everyday sock and a really heavy woolen sock kind of come together and make this perfect blend. So these are mine. This is going to be my first addition to um, the Box of Socks 2018, which Kristen has just announced on her podcast. I was watching it this morning, getting ready to film mine, and she is going to be doing it again in 2018 because I did not knit 12 pairs of socks in 2017. I'll show you my box of socks, but um, I didn't get close. So we're gonna try again in 2018. Yes, white dog? She's, she's whining at me. It's gonna be an interesting episode really going to be an interesting episode. So this is my finished object. I do have a gorgeous pair of them. They are a plain vanilla sock. And up until this point, I had not had a mad fuzzy sock that fit perfectly. They were always a little bit too big, a little bit too baggy. So I used uh, two millimeter needles, which made a very dense, very nice fabric, as well as went down to 60 stitches. I, I don't normally knit socks at sti 60 stitches. Normally it's 64 stitches, but I went down and they are tight on the blocker. I think when I do actually wear them, they're gonna just fit so snugly. Um, and it's I, I'm finally happy with, with the fabric and the stitch count. So I think I'll be knitting my Mad Fuzzy socks at that from here on out. So those are my finished objects. And I am so happy to have those off the needle. I had a harrowing train journey to upstate New York in which I got a lot of time to work on those socks. So I'll tell you even more about that in the life update as well. So keep moving along with the knitting. All right, so first, first work in progress. Here we go. Um, so I am jumping on board with Ellie of Skane Deer Knits uh, Year of the Mitten. Um, this is going to be middle, middle long, I think she's calling it, middle long, and um, I bought her Sabu Mitten, not the club, the actual Sabu Mitten, and cast it on and really enjoyed it. I've been working on it, I, I cast it on on the train and worked on it on the first real leg of the journey, but by the time I really got going, I had the brain power to do nothing but vanilla socks. So I went back to the Christmas Eve cast on and did a little work on that. So I'm not super far, but I am super happy with the progress so far. This is really my first color work. It's not my first color work. I did a sock a little while back and you can see that one on the, the other episodes. I've got, man, I've got a mess here. I bought new needles for this as well. So they're just like, very stiff and haven't gotten their lives together yet. So here we go, there we go, there we go. So this is how far I've gotten. This is the cuff and you know the rest of the pattern is gorgeous and amazing. I just haven't had two brain cells to put together to read a chart. And this is in um, an alpaca yarn that Betsy gave me and I have the tag in here and that's what I'm fishing for. Jeez. Really migrated to the bottom, didn't it? There it is. So this is Barocco. Uh, there we go. Light Ultra Alpaca. And this was a Christmas gift from Betsy. Um, I really wanted something to make these mittens out of, and Mad Fuzzy is a fingering weight, and it does call for a DK. So I went ahead and got that and got it cast on bought a new pair of carbons needles i don't have anything this size so i had to go and buy a new pair of needles which was good because i got a gift certificate to my local yarn shop for christmas and so i got to go in and buy the good needles that i love i love carbons that's no lie so there is the beginning of my first salvo mitten and i am so happy when i first cast it on my floats where you go around you know switching between the two needles were so tight i had made this little baby mitten but I can definitely get this on my hand and it's nice and snug. Sorry about this light over here. It's, it's diffused light no matter where I go. So there it is. Ah, oh, I'm so happy. So hopefully with the rest of my brain power and the caffeine I have 
ingested this morning, I may be able to do a little work on this before I go weave baskets this afternoon. So Heath has gone to go record his podcast. Yes, my handsome man has a podcast too. Uh, it's called Garbage Fire and they have it on iTunes and their website and it's a, a Magic the Gathering podcast. So him and his friend Corey, they talk about uh, the card game Magic the Gathering, which he's pretty serious about. And yeah, it's a great little podcast. If you do know someone or yourself are interested in Magic the Gathering or would like to hear two very handsome men talk about something you have no idea about, then uh, check out their, their podcast. It's, it's hilarious. It is not family friendly. Not family friendly at all. There are serious F-bombs dropped left and right. So if you have sensitive ears, uh, this may not be the Magic the Gathering podcast for you. <laughs> But that's where he is. He's gone to go record that. Um, all right. Back to knitting. Sorry, that was a terrible tangent. So, speaking of my handsome man, though, for my birthday and for my Christmas Eve cast on, he purchased me the most adorable project bag. And this is a bag that he got at my local yarn store um, by a company called Three Bags Full. There's her card. And you can find her in a lot of places on Etsy, on Ravelry, on Facebook, on Instagram. I will put all that information in the show notes. But this little toadstool bag is just so well made. It is rigid. It's got, it's got one of these poles. So when you pull the zipper, you can hold onto this. It comes with this gorgeous little bead as a zipper pull. It's got a handle, which I just, I can't live without. This is the perfect little project bag. It has been, it's been going everywhere with me. And I put another project in it before, you know, I even had the other project out. I love this bag. So in this bag, I do have another work in progress, a vanilla sock, which everyone's got to have on their needles for those vanilla sock moments. But this is the Arnie and Carlos Perfect. So it's a Regia brand. It's the pink one. It's self-patterning. It's amazing. Here is the tag. This bad boy is going to knit up. Oh my goodness, I am having some serious focusing issues today. It's going to knit up like this. Oh, jeez, come on. Focus on the tag. It'll focus on me, but it won't focus on... There it goes. All right, so it's going to make those cute little socks. It's a pair fix, so I'm going to have two identical socks. It is my brainless, mindless knitting of choice. And it's pink. I can have pink socks. So I've gotten to this wonderful little texture down here. I'm gonna do a slip stitch garter heel with the flap and everything, because I like it. That's not what they recommend. Usually it looks like it's like an afterthought or a short row heel, but I always do the, the standard heel I do on my vanilla socks. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna see how that actual pattern turns out when I do a heel, because there's this pink Mary Jane strap thing. So we'll see, I'm excited. I haven't seen any online that were a slip stitch heel, so I'm not entirely sure how it's going to turn out. So I'll put that back in my absolutely favorite bag at this moment. I am so infatuated with this bag. Oh, I love it. And I also have one more cast on, which is my addition to the Pod People Cal. Hashtag Pod People Cal. This is my first cal. I get to get excited. Um, this is just the cuff at the moment, the fledgling cuff of one by one twisted rib. And this yarn was a Christmas gift from the Bulliers, which are close, close friends of ours and wonderful. They made us this amazing gift basket of things they had made. They made soap and granola and dog biscuits. And they included a skein of String Theory yarn for me. And String Theory is a local dyer to me. She doesn't produce the yarn. She does um, use just kind of a stock yarn, but there's her label. And this is her BFL base. She calls it blue stocking. And it's 80% um, superwash BFL and 20% nylon. So it's machine washable and whatnot. And it's this gorgeous autumnal orange and red and light brown. And these bad boys are going to be the Stern Teller socks by Becky Sorensen of the Soprano Knits podcast. Um, which is one of my favorite podcasts. She does a really great job, but she's gone completely off the walls knitting um, patterns or making patterns. And so she's done a, a sock pattern. It was free with signing up for a newsletter. Of course, I'm going to sign up for a newsletter. 
I want to hear all about that stuff. I actually put in both email addresses, my personal and Mad Fuzzy, so that I would never miss it. But she calls for one by one twisted rib when you first cast on, and that is not something I normally do. Um, I am a two by two girl, so I said, you know what? I'm gonna trust that she knows what she's doing. Last time I did one by one twisted rib, it wasn't very pretty. And that was because I was not a good knitter. And I am so happy with how this has turned out now. And I've got it on my set of carbons. I do have a 2.25 millimeter in this and I did the medium size, which is 64 stitches. And this does look big. They may turn into Heathcliff socks. We'll see. We'll see when we get to the heel, if they'll fit over my foot and if they're big and if they fit on Heath's foot and they're nice, then I'll just keep knitting to that 11 and a half mark. Yeah, he has 11 and a half feet. That's why he doesn't get a lot of socks. It's a lot of knitting. So we'll see, we'll see. But this is gonna be my, my entry into, of course I can't win prizes. I'm giving the prizes, but I wanna play along. So this is my entry into the Pod People Cal, which is a cal about um, all those wonderful podcasters. And so Becky Sorensen and Soprano Knits does count. And I have cast on. And I will continue on that, um, hopefully finishing at least one for next podcast. Okay, so that concludes my works in progress. And so I am going to talk a little bit about my box of socks. And, oh, no, I forgot. You know me. I have to do hashtag memory sock garland. And so I did cast on and finish a little memory sock for my... Um, this is my mad fuzzy yarn. And I did the little micro striping too. It's so cute. I love these things. And I love that I only have to knit one of them because they're not for actual people with actual feet, which come in twos. Fun fact, I'm sure you're aware of. But I can make just one little baby sock. It makes me happy. So this will continue along this year as well. And I will just have this big garland behind me um, when I do move into my studio of all the little socks that I have knit over the years. So it's my version of a memory square blanket. It's my memory sock garland. So hashtag memory sock garland, check it out. Post in it, I feel like I'm the only one in there. Somebody else has to wanna to knit tiny socks. Just saying, knit tiny socks. But without further ado, my dear friends, let's talk about my box of socks. First of all, I'm gonna talk about my box that my box of socks is in. This box, is a 17th century carved wooden box that I made when I was working for a local premier hand tool maker of woodworking hand tools and a gentleman named Peter Fallensby. You can check him out on Instagram. He has a gorgeous Instagram. Um, he does all kinds of videos and classes on green woodworking and 17th century style furniture making. And he offered a class on these boxes, which I worked when I was there and I then after the class finished my own. So this is, um, it's all green oak well, it was when I started, which I split and planed down into workable slats and then I carved them. And, um, and then the lid is a pine lid in which I had carved on as well. It's got, so on the front here is this motif. And then on the sides, is that, and then it's got these gorgeous hinges in which I, I made, and it's beveled all the way around. Um, I did make a second one for a friend's wedding gift that had like an internal uh, little door flap thing that you could put other objects in, so it kind of partitioned out the interior. And I had this one, which was my first, and I thought it would be a perfect thing for my box of socks. And so, open it up here. In my box of socks, in no particular order, I will start with the first pair, which is my 70s kitchen sock. These were Barocco yarn in their sock line. I am doing Barocco in their al ultra alpaca for my mitten, but this was their pattern sock. It was a gift, um, and they are just so 70s kitchen colored that I called them my 70s kitchen socks. So that is pair number one. Pair number two is my Mad Fuzzy Test Yarn Socks with the heel and toe string in them. 
So there are those. They're also kind of a self little micro striping sock. No serious pooling on them. This is one of my first dye jobs as Mad Fuzzy. Um, and this was the test yarn I had gotten back from the mill. So not really the end product of Mad Fuzzy, really kind of the beginning of where it started, but I'm very excited about these because they're thick and warm. So the next sock, so that's pair number two. Here is pair number three. These are in Diamond Footsie Select, which is also a commercial sock yarn. These are what I'm calling my 80s socks. You'll remember these from my former podcast. Um, they are a self-patterning sock as well. This was a gift for my birthday last year from Betsy, and I am excited about these as well. I think the thing about the box of socks that makes me so happy is that I haven't worn any of these. I've been wearing, you know, handed socks that I've made, but these are all new and I get to like, now that I've shown you, I get to put these in my sock drawer and wear them. So I'm super excited as I like remember these and go through them. I know that I get to actually wear them now because it's been a whole year. So here is another pair. These are my blue mercury socks, as you will recall. This is the mercury sock pattern. Everyone's got to knit one at some point. So that is the blue mercury socks. And they are, they are out of Manos de Uruguay. And they're Allegria base. So they're super soft. And you know, anytime I do feel like a loose yarn like this, I really do worry about the longevity, but got enough pairs I should be able to, to kind of rotate them out sorry my glasses keep slipping down I don't normally wear glasses on the podcast as you know I don't like to glare but my contacts are so old and I have not gotten a chance to get new contacts so you get to see sort of the uh the nerdy Marta she pushes up her glasses guys I'm blind as a bat fun fact and the final pair of socks in my box of socks is this pair of the Simple Skip Sock in a one lupin colorway called Candy Skein. Um, this is really my first pair of fully ribbed socks. I know it's not a true rib, but it, it is. You know, it's got that slip stitch in the middle, but I am excited to try a first pair of um, And this is on her 100% BFL base. So that is the box of socks for this year. Not 12 pairs by any means, but one, two, three, four, five pairs of socks that I get to wear. I'm so excited about that. That's gonna be wonderful. So I'm gonna put those in my sock drawer and I'm going to reuse the box for my box of socks next year because I am already started. I'm, I'm rearing to go. I'm, I wanna buy the, um, the two sock clubs by the Knitting Expat. So, I mean, yeah, I have a chance to enter quite a few things into the pod people cow because I am going to knit all those. I, I'm, I want, they're alternating months, so it's one sock month, one club one month, one club the next month, and one's harder than the other. And so I, I just love the whole idea. I love everything that Nina of the Knitting X Pack does. She is brilliant, and her socks are they're a joy. So I am going to buy both those clubs and go through them. So you'll be seeing that quite a bit on this podcast as well. That's kind of one of my New Year's goals. I'm sure you have plenty of knitting goals yourself. Um, this is a great podcast to start talking about them. And yes, in true goal fashion, I, I may not get through them. So it happens. On to, on to my next thing, which is... Um, I'm going to say it's kind of an acquisition, kind of a, a hey, did you know? Um, so for Christmas this year, I was given a massive salad spinner for my yarn business. Um, this I got at webrestaurant.com. It is a five-gallon salad spinner. Lid. You can see it's got the whole, oh, geez, um, it's the lid. It's got this inner salad spinny doodad. It's got a little hose. Um, and I've used this, I just put it in my bathtub and I put three skeins of yarn in here, put the lid on and hold tight. I mean, the momentum of three skeins of yarn gets going pretty good, but I, I just start spinning it around, start slowly and just keep it going. Um, and I can wring out all the water in my skeins really, really easily. 
Um, I, there was no dripping when I dyed the other day. And um, this, is, this is a $60 buy. You look at some of those um, you know, automatic skein ringers that people have. And I know Amy on hers said she could not live without it. But it's not a, an inexpensive piece of machinery. This is a mechanical thing that can be put away, brought out. I, like I said, I use it in my bathtub. It works great. Um, and it was you know, a fraction of the cost. So if you are a beginning indie dyer out there and looking for something that is going to kind of help your business as you grow and then maybe be replaced with an electric one when you have the funds um, but you do want something now that's going to prevent all your skeins from dripping all over your floor um, this is really a, a really good buy and i'm very happy to have it um, and it, it works beautifully so this is a, a five gallon industrial salad spinner and i'll include a link in the uh in the show notes to that store where you can find one yourself um, which is an excellent segue into some mad fuzzy news. So on Tuesday, was that Tuesday? No, it was Thursday. On Thursday, we had um, a winter hurricane, or as the weathermen like to call it, a bomb cyclone. And there was thunder and lightning in a hellacious snowstorm. And I took the day off. My, my boss said, don't even bother. Um, everyone was home and we all hung out and I got a bunch of knitting done, had a great time and then decided to reskein everything that needed to be reskeined, which then turned into why don't I clean the kitchen and dye some yarn. So I finished out all the skeins that I want to have in my first update. Now it's just a matter of getting my label printed and, um, taking the pictures. So I think I'm going to take pictures of the yarn later this afternoon as I still do have the house all to myself to set up and make a huge mess and tear down before anyone gets home and notices. So I wanted to show you because you have been so wonderful and, you know, receptive of all my new colors and whatnot. I wanted to show you what I've been doing and the success I'd had to say this is my su most successful dye day. Everything turned out the way I had planned. And um, I wanted to show you and, and see how you liked them. Remember, these have not been reskeined, so they do still have my indicators telling me which is pure fuzzy and which is my nylon blend. And they have not been reskeined, so they're a little messy. But this is the first one I'm going to show you kind of open because I think open it, it, it does it much more justice. So this is my Romanian friend. Pull back a little bit here. Um, this is this lovely. Uh, charcoal gray, which is a lot darker. Oh my goodness, I am blown out so badly here. Eee. I put the curtain on it. Believe it or not, there's a curtain over that. Um, and then up here, it's got this, let's see, there we go, gorgeous red speckle, and then it kind of gradiates into this, this dark charcoal. And so that is finally, finally how I wanted my Romanian friend to turn out. Um, Really, the key to my success, I, I stopped trying to dye the speckles in water, and I have a, an electric roasting pan that I have, have started using to speckle my yarn, and so I don't add water to the electric roasting pan, it just heats up the yarn for me, kind of like a microwave would, and the, the, the water in the skein is what sets itself. Um, and so I'm having a lot more success with bleeding and with my speckles staying where they need to be. So there it is in the skein. I am so happy with how this turned out. This little pink tag lets me know that this is the nylon blend. So there's that one. I then, because I wanted it in my update, dyed Tutti Fruity. Again, using that electric roasting pan and getting so much more success. So Tutti Fruity is a, really a moderate speckle. It's got some pinks and some greens. I'm gonna rotate and this yellow tag lets me know that this is on my pure fuzzy base 100% East Frisian yarn um, raised milled and dyed in Maine and finally one I uh, just said heck throw caution to the wind I'm putting colors in this pot and I'm going to see what happens and I am super pleased with how it turned out just super pleased so here is this unnamed skein viewers you're better at coming up with this stuff than I am. Name this skein. It's this gorgeous teal blue down and on the back here. And I will be reskeining these. And then uh, this kind of slate and charcoal. It comes out very purple. So there's that. Oh, 
this is my new favorite, absolutely new favorite. I'm so happy with how that turned out. So, yeah, that's the new yarn. That concludes what I'm going to put in the update, I believe. So I'm going to get those de-skeined, photographed, and then up on Etsy so I can announce to you all, hopefully on the next podcast, the official launch date of Mad Fuzzy Yarns. Yeah. Let's hope. Fingers crossed. I want to get this in your hands because I'm telling you, East Frisian is amazing. Um, and I'm also hopefully going to send some out to some people to, to try and, and see how other people like it, maybe some podcasters, things like that. Um, yeah, so... Stay tuned, exciting things happening in the world of Mad Fuzzy. And as I look around me, I believe, I believe this concludes all of the knitting material that I had for today's show. Uh, so if you are here for just the knitting, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope to see you in a reasonable time frame. I'm not gonna make any promises anymore. You'll see me when you'll see me, and it will be, it will be a reasonable time frame. Promises. Um, but I'm going to let you all know about what's been going on in my life and how everything's been and, you know, that we survived the bomb cyclone. Um, so as we kind of went into the holiday season, my birthday is always on the 24th of December because that's how birthdays work, which has always been Christmas Eve. And it was my 30th birthday this year, so I wanted to do something special. I invited some people over who ditched out on their own family functions and came to my birthday and I had quite a few people in the living room. We were drinking margaritas and we ate pork ribs and had a wonderful time, played some apples to apples. And um, yeah, it was really one of my best birthdays I had ever had. I got some time to knit during the day while the pork ribs were cooking. Um, the snowstorm, which was going to come in on Christmas, didn't come in till well after. My guests had left, so there was no worry about them driving home safely, which is always nice. If you know there's going to be a snowstorm, you have people over, you do, like, eh, I should cut the party short, make sure people get home safe. But it never started snowing. Um, we had people over that I hadn't seen over in our house in a while. Ashley and Corey, the bulliers, came by to drop off that basket. Ashley had broken her leg earlier in the year, and so she made the sacrifice of climbing all the way up to this house. This house is on top of a barn. And so there is a very steep little staircase that she and her broken leg um, very, very heroically scaled to come to my birthday. So I know you're out there, Ashley. Thanks for, thanks for braving the elements and the stairs and gravity to come to a wonderful birthday, best ever. And then Christmas morning, we woke up to a complete snowstorm. I mean, whiteout, wind, snowing. And we did stockings and open presents and then turned on the Batman trilogy and watched all three movies with um, you know, the, the, the three that came out most recently, Dark Knight and Batman Begins. And uh, I should know since I watched them so recently, but the Batman trilogy. And I knit and we just sat around our PJs and had a wonderful Christmas. Nobody came by, nobody went out. We just let the snow fall and, and had a great time. And then I went to New York, upstate New York, to see a college friend who had come back from Montana to see his family. And I thought, you know, you're a lot closer in New York than I would be, you know, to fly all the way to Montana. So I ended up going to New York to see him for a few days and piggybacking on his parents paying for him to come home. Um, and so I went up there and it was... I had said I was going to vlog about it, but it was a terrible adventure. It was awful. Um, I got to Portland and got on a little bus that takes you directly to South Station in Boston. I got there plenty of time, but the train was delayed. And they, they said it was at the yard five minutes away and because three minutes. So um, back to the story. Um, so I got there and it was delayed. It was five minutes away. And because of the cold, I mean, it was negatives. It has been negatives for weeks, um, that it was not up and running, something had gone wrong, they were not coming. And so we sat in South Station in Boston, which is a freezing train station. I mean, I had my mittens on, my coat on, my hat on, and I was like on the verge of hypothermia, I think, at that point. After three and a half hours of sitting in there, I was really, really, really cold. And they didn't know when it was going to come, they didn't know when it was come. I, was, I met these wonderful people who we all hung out and commiserated together. and 
they were, you know, tweeting with Amtrak. They were like, we have no idea when it's going to be here. I was like, man, that's, that's really bad. <laughs> you have, a, like, do you not have any other trains? Like, I, I'm not, I'm now seeing why train travel in America may be on the decline. Um, but I finally got a train. It came like, oh, hey, the train's here. Get on the train. I was like, oh, whoa, the train's here. So we got on the train and finally got to my destination hours and hours uh, later than I had thought. I thought I was going to be there at 8 o'clock at night. I ended up getting up there at midnight, um, hung out with my friend, had a wonderful New Year's, uh, rang in the New Year with uh, champagne and good friends, and I woke up on the New Year's Day and looked at my train schedule, and the train by 8 o'clock in the morning was already five hours delayed. So I got an extra day with my friend. I thought I was going to be leaving at noon. The train did not leave until 9 p.m. So I had this problem that the train was going to leave at, at noon from Utica, New York, and arrive in Boston South Station at 8 p.m. There was a bus from Boston to Portland that ran up until midnight. And so I had made it so I could get home that night, and Heath would pick me up at, you know, 10 or 11 in Portland, we'd be home by midnight, I'd sleep in my own bed. But because the train was so late, there's this window of time between midnight and 5.45 a.m. where there are no buses. So if I arrive by train in South Station, I'm stuck in South Station until 5.45 a.m. And who wants to be in a train station between midnight and 5 a.m.? That seems like the worst time to be anywhere. You know, I, so... I kept watching the train, hoping it was going to be, at that point, later. I wanted it to be much later. I wanted it to be so late that it would go through the night and I would end up in Boston South Station in the morning, in like 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning. And well, I got my New Year's wish because it didn't leave until 9 p.m. Well, I mean, a little after 9 and then when we got to Albany, because the engine had been running for so long, they had to switch engines, which delayed us even more, I managed to get into Boston South Station at 4.30 a.m., which meant I only had to sit in the creepy train station for an hour. Yay! I mean, small miracles. Who'd have thought taking a train through the night would be such a blessing? But that is why I didn't get a lot of knitting done on my mitten. Because between the hours of midnight and 4 a.m., I do not think that you should be working on a color work project whatsoever if it is your first. Like that's, That seems like a, a very reasonable idea. You know, maybe I shouldn't do this extremely complex thing when I am staying up all night. So I, I worked a lot on my socks, which is why I got those wonderful socks finished. But I didn't get my actual knitting dream, which was to finish a Sabu mitten on the train trip, and I did not. Thank you, Amtrak. My knitcation, uh, vacation was not all I had hoped it would be, thank you to extremely delayed trains. But I ended up catching that 545 bus, got to Portland at like 8 a.m. Boyfriend came and picked me up. We went home, and he took the day off of work, and we just slept. It was beautiful. I loved it. I just, I, I slept most of the day, and then knitted a little bit at night and went to bed early again. So that pretty much brings us up to, to current snowstorm. Um, we made it through the bomb cyclone. We've made it through the negatives. It is supposed to be 41 degrees on Thursday. 41 degrees. I cannot, I cannot wait. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's been so cold and so awful for so long. I forgot winter was actually like this. So I'm hoping for a little bit of snow melt off. We call it the January thaw when there's a little bit of melt off. And I'm hoping in that January thaw to get my stovepipe on and um, continue working on our house so we can actually be moving in. Um, it's looking like we probably will be moving in closer to the spring than um, the beginning of the new year. But if I've learned anything about this house, it's that it's going to take longer than I expected to do everything. And I, I think that's all I really, really wanted to talk to you about. Um, thank you so much for tuning into this episode. It is going to be a little bit longer than it usually is, but I think I filled it with some good, good, goody goodness. 
Um, please do like this video, hit that little thumbs up if you did enjoy my podcast. It helps me get found in the whole YouTube universe. And subscribe if you would like to be, um, you know, informed whenever I do release an episode. They are completely random and they come out whenever I get a chance. So if you do uh, subscribe, you'll be notified that I have released a new episode and you can be one of the first to watch it. So thank you again for tuning in. Subscribe, like, go on over to the Ravelry group and join in on that pod people knit along. I'll be setting that up here in the next few minutes so we can all get started on knitting things and using things that the podcasters of the world create. There are so many wonderful ones and I'm hoping that through this podcast, um, I and you will find some new, uh, not only podcasts, but some new wonderful products that we can enjoy and knit together. So Thank you again, have a wonderful day, and as always, enjoy your knitting. Mm -hmm.